Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Season 8, Episode 5, Granny's Gone Wild. Like all those late night infomercials, except with less... No, wait, no, that was definitely implied. But still less suggestive content. Yeah. Look at us pull up our shirts. I'm like, oh yeah, those were wonderful. Though, maybe at the time, my teenage mind, I don't know, it's been a while. <laughs> also, I may have been more focused on what video game was coming out next at the time. I was a very strange young child. But on to the episode itself, and also the fact that I'm drawing Granny Smith, because I was like, I haven't drawn Granny Smith, I'll draw her. And for those who might have expected a Rainbow Dash image, wait for the end. I would have liked this episode so much better if the end of the episode was longer. And what I mean by that is instead of all this stupidity by Rainbow Dash, I, I wish the whole thing about Applejack coming up with the rules would have come out like right at the beginning of the trip. So Rainbow Dash would have had a chance to see how cool and awesome Granny Smith and her friends were for more than just the five seconds at the end of the episode to wrap things up. Well, she kept seeing how awesome they were, but she kept interfering because she was remembering what Applejack said about keeping them in line. And this makes me wonder how Big Mac handled everything. Because why did Applejack get a say at all when Big Mac is usually the chaperone? Wouldn't Big Mac have been the one to check with? And this episode combined two common children's show themes. The finding out that an older acquaintance or family member is actually cool and going to see something before it's gone the world's best roller coaster and granny smith and her friends being awesome and apparently have been there every year for a while and they're part of an exclusive club they basically are the exclusive club and they've gone so often they're vips it is incredibly obvious throughout the show that they have vip status and they've been doing stuff like this for years like the horseshoe toss and just a bunch of stuff the dancing the magic show the buffet the shopping mm -hmm. and apparently been trying to get on that magic show for years yes they waited a long time to be invited yeah because they wanted to be invited <laughs> not just yeah also that reminds me of that wonderful scene between i can't remember her name and the bailiff not bailiff between Applesauce and the uh, Bellhop. Yes, that was great. That scene was best scene. You realize in Japan that's going to be a huge deal because that would be indirect kissing. Would it? Because it was just teeth. So I don't know. Because it's usually implied that the lips have touched the item. And I don't think the lips actually touch the coin. He's not touching the same side of the coin as she is. But still, I, it might be a problem over there. I don't know. I, I just know like that poor Bellhop. He's like... <laughs> Why did I have to be an Earth Tony? Also, I saw some tweets about people going, you know, climbing a tree might be a big deal to an Earth Pony. Going back to another one of Granny's friends who was like, remember that time I, like, do you know, do you all know the story of how I climbed a tree? Yes, we've heard it. Oh, you want to hear the story? It's like, yes, as an Earth Pony, as a pony, period, that's a big deal. You have hooves, not hands. And you're a quadruped. And then there's a the whole DDR machine in the background if you look at some of the scenes. And you're like, would they have an advantage being four-hoofed? Or since... This world, is it automatically more complex? Yeah. But the player was standing on their hind hooves. Hmm. The screenshot I saw, they were on all fours. Hmm. Good memory, though. Leave it to Amber to have a memory like a steel trap. And then there's me who quantum leaps through life. <laughs> Yes, jumping from place to place with no memory of how he got there. Hoping one day to leap back home. <laughs> Wherever that actually is, I don't remember at this point. It might be Mars, it might be Pluto, it might be someplace in a different part of the galaxy. I don't know. Though I hear Earth's nice. Before we start going on the long list of like all the stuff we had ugh, about in this episode, anything you really liked other than a couple of stuff we've already brought up? Well, of course, the whole thing of showing that different generations are still really cool and have value. I mean, that was something that was touched on in an earlier season with Apple Bloom and Granny Smith and the Zap Apple Jam. At first, Apple Bloom was embarrassed by Granny Smith's behavior. And then she learned to love it and dragged Diamond DR right into it. That was 
was great. Well, part of it is she learned the reasons behind things, which is important to know the whys, not just the hows. Though, knowing that they've done this every year, what about the years when Granny Smith's hip started acting up and they were talking about getting it replaced for her and I think it was like the first season it was one of the reasons Applejack wanted to go to the Grand Gapling Gala. You know, that could have been a year that they took it a bit easier. Hmm. You know, maybe she didn't go out on the dance floor. She just hung out at the buffet and in the casino. I really want to eat those nachos! Not surprising, considering that part of their hearthwarming dinner is seven-layer bean dip. Though I do think that Granny Smith was the weakest of the interruptions, compared to everyone else, especially the whole magic act. That, that was criminal. Yeah, well, that was the big climactic scene to finally get, uh, and she, after Lux, just praises my memory. I think that their exclusive club was called Goldie Gals, which to me was just a callback to Golden Girls. Which was probably true. Also, speaking of those magicians, I think one of them's related to Trixie. Considering the way that disappearing act went. And his main color and how he acts, I'm like, are you related to Trixie? Or maybe he was a teacher of Trixie? I mean, that only explains mannerisms. That doesn't go into main color and coat color. But he's like, like, you remind me so much of Trixie. You must be related. <laughs> Van Derry's galore. All the parts with the grannies I really enjoyed. It's when Rainbow Dash went and messed them up for no reason. I, I know Applejack put this stuff in your head, but can't you tell by like that afternoon that they actually know what they're doing and you probably should have also gone and asked Big Mac as a second source of information of how to keep the grannies under control because it was so important to her? Also, why not fess up from the beginning that Applejack said I had to keep an eye on you? Why did that have to be some big secret list that she kept tucked under her wing? There was no reason to hide that. Also, I love the wing animations. They're using the wings and other things as hands a lot more often now. I think it's because they have the resources to make all that extra animation. And they've worked with the programs long enough that the wings are a lot more um, dexterous than they used to be. Because I think they only had like maybe three positions outside of flapping before this. And then they're getting all um, like extra hand appendages. Because <laughs> they got fingers. I've got blisters on me fingers! If you know where that's from, congratulations, you're a Beatles fan. <laughs> it's like, but now, tell me the reason why he says that in the comments below. <laughs> so, what other really things bugged us? Because we were like, both of us were like looking at each other at the end of this episode going, huh. Well, pretty much everything with Rainbow Dash, starting with the fact that she wanted to skip out on teaching her classes, highly irresponsible. For the element of loyalty to try to get out of her commitment to her friend's friendship school to go ride a roller coaster. Hmm. I didn't see that before. I kind of just glazed over the fact that she basically talked Applejack into helping her with the lessons. Hmm. I can see how loyalty would come into that. The start of the episode wasn't that bad. It was mostly that part once she got interacting with the grannies at... Las Pegasus. It was like, ugh. Basically, every time she interfered with them having a good time. And how they kept going, I never thought I would have to say this about you, but you're a stick in the mud. It's like, you are such a drag. You thought you'd be the cool one. And how she's like all offended by that. Because she's normally 20% cooler, but Applejack had her thinking that she had to play nursemaid. Mm. And I do like that part at the end where they really show off how much clout they have. Bypass the entire line. Go, so, yes, we're the Goldie Gals, and uh, she's with us. Uh, hope you like to ride in the front. Of course, ride starts. Uh, dear, you might want to hang on now. Implying full well that they have probably done that every single year since the ride's been there. <laughs> Actually, they implied that they did a lot of things every year. Like how applesauce was like saucy all the time and going after all the men. And they were like, hey, slow it down a little bit. Ah, oh, good point. I should see what else is on the market. Ooh, I would love to see these gals when they were younger. Oi! Well, we've seen some flashbacks of Granny Smith, but mm, not a whole lot of... Oh, actually, there is a lot because 
We had the flashbacks with uh, the parent retcon. And she was a full adult at that point. We've had several flashbacks of her as a filly. You know, in the Zap Apple Jam episode and in the family reunion episode where she was working on the quilt with the other family members. And then we also had some in the Flim Flam Brothers episode with their apple tonic because we had some callback to when Granny Smith used to do high diving. Mm. Yeah, but I would like to see them younger going to Las Pegasus because I have a feeling it would be a hoot. Uh, yeah. Also, did you notice that Flim and Flam were on the entrance doors? And did you notice they had statues? Uh-huh. They really gussied up the place. Well, remember how empty it was when they first took it over. Is there anything else you'd like to go over? Or should we start wrapping things up for this episode? Since we both were like, huh. <laughs> yeah, just the pacing was off mainly. Because the whole revelation of why Rainbow Dash was being such a downer should have come in earlier, because then you could have played it one of two ways. It either could have played like how the actual ending did of, oh, this makes sense. Okay, can we actually have fun now? Or them going on to actually have fun and Applejack being proven right by having something bad happen. I was actually thinking that was the way it was going to go at first. Rainbow Dash would kind of shirk off things just enough. The grannies would have too much fun and be kicked out. And they'd be, and they'd see something like that. Well, that just happens every year. Very likely, but very sneaky ladies. Because I mean, really, pretending to go to bed, stuffing the beds, and then going out on the floor. This is why I wanted to see what kind of hijinks they got up to when they were younger at this place. Because if that's how they think when they're there. Also, this implies that this is what they do to poor Big Mac. Only assuming that Big Mac acts like Rainbow Dash was acting. Maybe the first year or two. Well, the first year or two they would have been younger. Because we know they've been doing this a long time. I was mostly referring to first year or two with Big Mac coming along as a chaperone. Ah. You know, him learning the ropes. That would be a fun episode. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> uh, pretty girl walks by. Yep. <laughs> and that reminds me of the episode when... Applejack and Big Mac were younger, or the what was exactly going on in that episode, I just remember they being younger and Big Mac having a lot of talking lines in that, because that's where he learns to shut his mouth. There was another flashback episode of when Applejack wasn't honest, because she was trying to make deals about the cider and then lying about it and covering it up. I can't think of anything else for this episode, can you? Well, that would probably be a yes. <laughs> Always, but... You know, the recordings really shouldn't be longer than the actual episodes, <laughs> though we do do that sometimes. Yeah, well, well, sometimes the recordings is longer than the actual episodes, but then I edit them down and it ends up being like five minutes short, but that's okay, because I'm good at manipulating time in editing programs. Now, if only you could pull it off in real life. Yes, that would be handy. Like, pausing time so I could get stuff done. That would be the best thing. Also, universal undo. Henshin! I mean, outro? Yes, yes, he's still doing the whole arm thing. Like he has a wristwatch or a power morpher or something. He just brings his arm up. It's morphing time. Go, go. No, wait. <laughs> Wrong series. You're thinking, hinge and a go, go, baby. That was a wonderful set of games. I never saw the anime, but I know it was awful. <laughs> I watched one episode. I don't recommend doing that. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episode 5, Granny's Gone Wild. Hey, so you're here at the end credits, but we don't have those. So, stuff. Stuff we have. There, there's a like button, and a subscribe button, and a comment button, and there's links... Oh, and other videos. We have lots of other videos. Also, there's more artwork all over the internet. So yeah, we have links for those. Oh, also we accept money. We have links for that too. And commissions. Lux takes orders. Yeah, there's a link for that. We got links. Links everywhere. Mm, actually, only two. Pony Link and the Link in a Pony Sketch. Thank you for taking me literally. 
So yeah, you could use the art links to find the pictures I just mentioned. And you could go through the content on our channel to find videos where that art was used. So just to briefly go into a little more detail on everything, we have a channel full of video content, several websites where you can view artwork, and two websites where we can accept monetary contributions. Those would be Patreon and Coffee. Patreon starts at $1, which gets you voting rights to a monthly sketch. Probably the cheapest commission you're ever going to get for a sketch. One buck. And Coffee works in $3 increments. It is not a subscription, so one time only, no commitment, only requires PayPal. If you want to do more than $3, that works too, but it has to be increments of three. You can help support Lux's coffee habit. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.